The views and opinions expressed on any program are those of the producers and or the persons appearing on the program and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of FRC Media, Bristol Community College or the City of Fall River. Hello, welcome to Spindle City Straight Talk. I'm Chip. And I'm CJ. And it's a Monday. Here we go again. Here we go again. And let's, uh, let's talk very clearly about a few things. Because uh, I got the City Council agenda. The Herald News has reported on it. I reported on it over the weekend. Uh, Mayor Correa is again creating another job for yet another friend, his childhood mentor. What was that, five years ago? <laughs> um, oh, he is. His name is Mike Agia, and uh, to some of us, he's very familiar because during um, what was then known as, you know, the hateful time in Fall River, the recall, the black eye of Fall River, as uh, the, an stain. Attorney, the, the stain, stain yes, the stain, yes, that an attorney said, um, he is a certified addiction specialist or uh, prevention specialist, CPS prevention specialist. And accordingly, that's supposedly mass certified. Now, interestingly enough, because I have here in my hands the hateful stuff that they, they don't like that we get, I have here the requirements for the Massachusetts Certified Profession Specialist and their application. Ooh, bad boy, CJ. You shouldn't have done that. But guess what you need? A GED or a high school diploma to get this. And this certification was created in a little before 2013 and they started the implementation process. And the majority of people that currently hold this certification have been grandfathered in. They didn't even have to meet the current requirements. And it was created by a group of addiction treatment centers. Uh, could somebody say star out loud? Uh, star. <laughs> And, you know, I know that this is a public health issue, all right? But let's be real. This guy is being appointed to a full-time position making $65,000 a year. Hey, and in fairness, the guy does have an associate's degree from BCC. But with an associate's degree, you need 120, uh, 200 hours of training, continuing education training <clears throat> on great stuff like Prevention ethics, cultural competence, mental health, gambling, HIV, AIDS, and hepatitis C, violence prevention, i.e. bullying, 30 hours, five in each category, of alcohol, tobacco, and other drug categories, opiates, marijuana, tobacco, alcohol, addictions 101, and prescription drugs. And then 30 hours, five hours in each category, on prevention practice and theory. PPT category, strategic prevention uh, frameworks, social norms, environmental strategies, youth development, communications, media, and evidence-based practices, and then 99 hours in electives. Wow. Now, here's the kicker. If you go to BCC and you take a three-credit course, how many hours is it equal to? Not three. It's 45. Because it's one hour a day times three, uh, three times a week times 15 weeks, 45 hours. So you can knock these off real fast. And then you have to have 2,000 hours in cl supervised clinical work. Well, the clinical work can be in any number of things. And this little pamphlet, which is available online, by the way, is very clear um, about how to do this, how to do it, what, what's acceptable, what's not. But 2,000 hours of documented supervised prevention specific work experience in the last 10 years. 51% of the time must have been spent in providing alcohol, tobacco, and or other drug abuse prevention activities and or services, i.e. handing out pamphlets at a public venue. Or a minimum of 51% of the time must have been spent providing supervision of prevention activities and or services. Now this guy is going to put together new inter interventions, new programs for the police department and the school department 
to attack drug addiction in our city. My big question is, when did Fall River become a drug and alcohol treatment center? I, you know, really, they're going to take a nurse position. Granted, it hasn't been fu it's funded, but it hasn't been filled for some time, who is trained, a public health nurse, who has specific criteria that they have to meet, certain things that they have to do, certain licensure they have to maintain, okay, where they actually do something. And they are there for the prevention of disease, communicable diseases. But, you know, according to Mayor Correa, that's not important. Your, the community health isn't important. We need to focus on the new drug word, you know, the new key buzzword of the week, the new key buzzword of the year, opiate addiction. You know what, people? That is not a disease. That is a choice. People choose to use drugs. They choose to use alcohol. And they choose to do that to numb their feelings because they have psychiatric issues. That's where the disease is. We cannot force treatment down anyone's throat. You can only make it available. And to create a position paying $65,000 a year minimum with benefits and then with retirement to pay back your childhood mentor is nothing but a political payback. That is a political favor being returned. And you know what? That's unacceptable. Don't say adding positions is reorganizing departments, boy emperor, okay? Because that's not what it is. Adding positions is not reorganizing departments, it's adding people, okay? And yes, I've used the term boy emperor now twice, okay? And I didn't come up with that term. I believe the Herald News came up with it. But you know what? It's starting to appear very true because it seems like you're trying to make your court, okay? I mean, you've already got your court jester <laughs> and... You know, how many other people? So how many other people are going to happen? Or is that mistaken comment that was heard on Channel 10 going to happen where you're going to bring in the brightest and best from Rhode Island? <clears throat> yes, I have that clip. So let me know what's going to happen because I'm totally disgusted at this point. And after my article was, was put out yesterday, okay, my phone was ringing off the hook. And just so people know, our, my articles are usually written earlier in the day or maybe earlier in the weekend and they get scheduled for release at 9 p.m. So that's enough of my diatribe on the Michael Aguiar kiss my butt position. Well, you just had to get me really angry on a Monday, right? Okay. You had <laughs> what to do I do? You best? just had to do it. Again. Well, you know, we got more. You know, positions. you know, all I got to say is ain't government grand. Yep. Because we got some we now we got these papers and these criteria and and of course there'll be licensing and there'll be fees and the state gets their money and they create jobs and positions that that look important and sound important uh for people who are politically connected again well let's put this in perspective you go to high school you go to college you continue on after your regular bachelor's degree and you get a Juris Doctor and you become an attorney. And you start at $35,000 a year at the DA's office as, as an ADA. Not in Fall River. You know? <laughs> and, well, no, that's for the city of Fall River, but you work in the ADA's office, you're going to get 35 or 40 grand. That's right. Uh, you, get, you get a bachelor's oh. degree and maybe even a master's degree in psychology or sociology, and you're lucky to get a job paying 40 grand or 50 grand. And we got somebody that can have a GED and it's politically connected that gets 65,000. And on top of that, our council, and I've already branded them the council because they haven't even met yet, and I'm already being negative, <laughs> because what are they going to do? They're going to put this job in ordinance. They want to make this job permanent, forever, a forever job. For, so when this political lackey retires, and by the way, the 65 grand 
is also he gets a percentage of grants, which will probably run his salary up over a hundred grand. But the fact is, they want to put it in ordinance. We just can't have a job. Wait, I'm really gonna I'm really gonna let you fire now, Chip. And he's not a resident of Fall River. Well, he's from New Bedford. <laughs> well, well, hey, listen, listen. Uh, nine out of ten appointments the mayor is suggesting for the school department live out of the city. Right. So what the hell? I, apparently, you know, he wants to be the mayor of a city that nobody in the city has enough brains to get any job. And I think one of those jobs is a janitorial position, and <laughs> that couldn't even be filled by somebody from Fall River. So I guess we don't even have anybody that can qualify to sweep a floor. Hey. But, you know, that's another issue. But let's get I, back. I, I, I guess the residence requirement yeah. in order to... We digress, apply. but yeah. let's get back to this thing. <laughs> the city council wants to make this job permanent. Now, the city council will not stand up and say... The 1710 standard for Manning in the fire service says you should have no less than four men on an apparatus, yet Fall River's run with three men on a truck for years. They won't abide by that. That's a standard. Uh, there are criterias for public safety that are never met. Age of apparatus, how many police officers, but yet we can always make a job for some political hack permanent, a forever job, because, you know, they're thinking, you know, bless them. <laughs> they are already thinking like politicians because they see this job and they've embraced it. They said, let's not let this political hack job ever disappear because someday one of my friends may be able to get that job. And if we put it in ordinance, it will always be there. And, you know, you want to get me upset, you have, because this is government at its worst. And I'll remind everybody, I think on a, a, long, a show very, very long ago, I talked about what happens when you make things uh, permanent. The oldest running civil service job that was ever eliminated was in England. It was put into ordinance, per se, you know. And that job was to stand on the white cliffs of Dover and watch for Napoleon Bonaparte's invasion fleet. And that job was finally eliminated in 1951. I guess Napoleon never showed up. <laughs> yeah, they waited till 51 for Napoleon to show up. And then finally somebody said, let's get this thing off the books. They probably created another ridiculous job, too. This is, this is number one, it's, it's, it's appalling. And while I understand the opiate problem is epidemic throughout this country, and especially throughout this state, but the police department is in the, is in the business of law enforcement, not drug counseling. Public health nurse is in the business of being a nurse. We have people who are supposed to do this job already. We have star, we have, we have uh, trained CPS information requirements the Massachusetts Board of Substance Abuse Counselor Certifications. I'm sure they have a whole list of people who are certified. And you know, let, them, let them do their job. For crying out loud, another 65 grand plus benefits, plus, plus a bump, plus a little, little cut of, of, the, of the grants, and no more firefighters. The hell with the police. The hell with the clerks at the city hall. Get one clerk. Let the let the thing go around the building 16 times, and you know. And we wonder why Fall River doesn't change. Well, you know, we changed three mayors, and maybe we're going to have to change the city council in two years again because this is absolutely ridiculous. And I know it's politically correct. Everybody, look, I'm not against the, a war on opiate addiction. But you let the people who are, who are in the field do it. 
We've already, the, the governor's appropriated hundreds of thousands of dollars for this. We've got hundreds of people who have degrees and who are involved in, in rehab facilities like STAR or whatever. And, you know, we have them all over the state of Massachusetts. Why don't we get out of the way and let them do their job? You want to help them a little bit by, by bringing it to the, to the forefront of the public? Fine. But the taxpayers, the property owners, for crying out loud, give them a break. Jeez, what a way to start Monday with another, another example of absolute total disregard for the regular people in Fall River, for the taxpayer. And on Sunday, I believe it was on Meet the Press when I watched it, very interesting statistic came up. They actually did a study over the last 10 years about how incomes were affected. And they said only the top 10% of the income in the United States has even gotten a slight bump in their, in their buying ability. And the farther you go down the ladder, the lower the income, the more severe the impact of infl inflation has become. We virtually eliminated the middle class in the United States. We're making everybody not even working poor anymore. Soon everybody in this, in this country who aren't one percenters will be on welfare at the rate we're going. And that's the reason the other statistic they brought up is that 80 percent of the people in this country are sick and tired of government. They are sick and tired of government because this is why Donald Trump is popular. He's saying what people believe. You know, like I said, my buddy Milton, like he said, give the government the Sahara Desert, we'll run out of sand in five years. And the fact is, we don't even have any money. We're the poorest city in the damn state, and they continue to make things up to spend money. All right, that's it. <laughs> well, you know, the, the thing that really bothered me was they didn't even con consult any public health, medically trained public health people. Oh, and, and for full disclosure, I, I do have a vested interest in this because you know what? Not that I want the job, but I am a federally and state certified public health nurse. I actually have a license that says that on it. Okay? But you know, I don't. Well, you're out. Yeah, I'm out. You're you know? out. But, and, and you know, I have more than a GED, obviously. But, you know, the next great thing was the misrepresentation of the lovely and the undeniably great school committee. <laughs> now, I, and, you know, it, I got to tell you something. This financial guy that they've got working for them, he's got to be a genius. Got to be a genius. Because even after he goes to a meeting of the Insurance Advisory Council and they explain to him the entire situation, he goes back to the school committee and he says, we're in a deficit. We need money. And then the chairperson of the subcommittee of finance goes on the radio and said, we're in a deficit. We need money. You know, this is uh, what we call blatant disregard for the public dollars and public common sense. Okay? And this is an absolute fabrication, misrepresentation of the facts as they are. And the problem is, is that they're selling it like the Nazis did. Okay? <laughs> They're yeah. selling this in the best propaganda going. Goebbels would be proud. Yes, he would. And, you know, this is the problem that we have. And the people in Fall River are walking around going, oh, the school department's broke. They got no money. My kids aren't going to be educated. Hey, you want to get some money? Fire half of those do-nothing administrators who don't do anything. But we may not have to because in June they're all going to follow Meg Mayo Brown over to Bonstable. Let them jack up their budget something. Let's, let's hope so. Yeah. But, you know, listen. There's only, you know, this financial, this financial guru sat at a, a meeting for over two hours. I believe that meeting lasted over two hours. It was explained very, very clearly. And apparently, everybody on the school 
committee side and the school department side is either blissfully ignorant or they're intentionally misrepresenting it because they figure they can get some money on the back end. Look, we did two shows on it. We had what? We got like 75,000 hits or something like that on some of our shows. And we have a lot of people that watch the show, even though they won't admit it because, you know, right, watches after, our show. right after we do something, there's something at City Hall. Well, you know, I made a call this morning to City Hall and told them very clearly that I'm going to, you know, I'm going to be making, we're going to be making a lot of noise about this. Listen, I don't know how difficult, we did two shows on this. I don't know how difficult it is to understand, but let me put it a little less than delicately. They're full of crap, okay? <laughs> you know, they, have, they don't have a clue about what they're talking about. The school department, as much as they want to believe that they are a, a nation unto themselves, they're not. One nation under Meg Mayo Brown. They are part of the city. And the health insurance in this city is group health insurance. Meg Mayo Brown tried to make a money grab because she knows that the health insurance in this city has been running on the budget for years. That we got an award from the state as being one of the best, if not the best, health care system in the state. Yet these people are going to disparage the work of the Insurance Advisory Committee and the people on the city side who are in charge of this by running around saying, we're out of money, we're out of money, we're in a deficit, the city won't let us go to a premium, blah, blah, blah. blah. It's crap. We're, as I said before, we're running over $2 million on the budget this year. And you're not running under budget. If you can solve an equation with half of it missing, you're better than Einstein. You can't do an equation that isn't complete. You can solve for one factor, but the other factors have to be in. You're doing an actuarial study on a group that doesn't exist. School department employees are not a separate group. They're part of the city group. And if you tell an actuarial to do a study on just that group, the figures will never be right. This is the reason I continue to say we need an independent forensic audit in this city, because apparently nobody knows how to do anything. Because the fact is, if I do a, a, if I do a healthcare actuarial study on Fall River, and I tell the person, I only want you to take the people who are over 70, I'm going to run out of money. Real bad. Those, because those, those figures are going to be astronomical. The projections are going to be astronomical. Well, guess what? There are people that are 19 and 20 and never get sick in the pool. How many times do we have to tell those, those pinheads over there that they're not an entity. I don't care what you say, you're trying to scan the books. You're not an entity. Number one, every city, every school department employee is not running out of money. As a matter of fact, their trust fund, which is the group trust fund, has almost six million dollars in it. And every single one of those employees has a collective bargaining agreement with the city of Fall River which says the city of Fall River will provide them with health care at a 75-25 split. Which means that if, you, if your people are running over budget, but the other people in the group are running under budget, well, all you do is pay the bill, which is what happens with the employee side. It means that the city side will now have to give you the money because it's a collective bargaining agreement and it's a group. It should have never been taken out of the city in the first place. It's a group insurance for accuracy, for accountability. It should be done like 99% of the cities and towns in this state. It's a group, 
should be treated as a group. It shouldn't have been carved out. It was Meg Mayo Brown making a money grab with a total ignorance about all the other ramifications of adverse selection pools, of stop loss insurances, and all the other factors that come into play in a health care system. And it even flies in the face of what they're talking about. They're all yelling, let's go to the GIC! Let's go to the GIC! Well, what's the concept of the GIC, you morons? <laughs> it's get everybody in a state together because the larger the group, the more stable the payment. So what does, this, what does the school department do? They try to take a small group out of a large group. And then they talk about the GIC. Talk about schizophrenia. <laughs> you people, there's something wrong with you people, and I'm not going to allow you to mislead the public because what you're trying to do is scam a couple of million, and I'm not going to let you do it. Just tell us how you really feel, Chip. You know, really. Tell us how you really feel. But, you know, this is what goes on. And, of course, we've made ourselves available um, to the school committee, to members of the school committee, and it wasn't until we had to put a little pressure on that some of those members actually came forward and started talking about it. And now they're understanding where we're coming from. We haven't changed. We said the same thing on the show, I don't know how many times. And we said the same thing over, I don't know if it's just you have to say it a hundred times to get it through somebody's head, but at least, you know, at least we're getting the information out there. But you know, what we're seeing right now is this two bodies, the city council and the school committee, neither have met yet. They've already made decisions without meeting and they're already ticking the community off. And everyone's already saying, oh, you're negative, give them a chance. We didn't even have to give them a chance. We tried. Within seven, it's been seven days. Within seven days, they all screwed up. Every one of them. There isn't one that hasn't. And this is the problem. This is the problem. And I'm gonna quote a city councilor, two of them actually, when I met with them during uh, the Boy Emperor's press conference back in December. Oh, we're gonna do what we want, we're gonna meet when we want, and we're gonna run it past the state before we do anything. Well, obviously you didn't, okay? Because this particular city councilor, she thinks she's all that and sliced bread, okay? And she's now taken back over control of her neighborhood group, I guess, uh, from what I was told. And now anything that comes up for her neighborhood, I'm going to stand there and I'm going to make sure she realizes when it comes up for a vote, she has to recuse herself. And if she fails to recuse herself, I'll personally hand her the ethics complaint and I'll send it off to Boston. You're going to have your feet held to the fire. There's no more games now. And if it means that the people of Fall River have to stop filing initiative petitions every 30 days to get ordinances reversed, guess what? They might just do that. So think about it before you put something into ordinance because if the people don't want it and they don't want it enough, it may cost you more in special elections every, every 90 days. And then you'll never get anything done in this city. I want to propose another ordinance. Go ahead. I want an, I want an advisory position, advisor to all certified prevention specialists, and I've already got my basic educational requirements. You have to at least have completed kindergarten okay <laughs> and you need at least one hour standing in government center and that's the that's the criteria well you've and we that. can put that in ordinance and maybe pay them seventy five thousand there you go there you go because you're a supervisor because you're a supervisor there you exactly go. Yeah. so let's let's With figure out some vacation. more let's figure out some more ways to yep. spend a taxpayer's dollars kill the kill the property owner and give them absolutely no service because most people who own houses don't need a certified prevention specialist. They're too damn busy to take drugs going to work. We, and you know, the thing is, is that this position caters to a small population, not the mass. And you know what? That's unacceptable. Stay angry. Oh yeah, and believe me, I already know we are. <laughs> uh, see you on Wednesday. Have a great week.